on the count of three, name your favorite dinosaur. Don't even think about it. Just name it. Ready? One, two, three. Velociraptor. Did we just become best friends? Yup. Do you want to go do karate in the garage? Yup. What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Today, I'm going to be showing off a new way to play Rapid Strike or Shifu VMAX. Or it could be a new way to play Dragapult VMAX. Either way, this deck has got two different Pokemon VMAX and one strategy. To spread damage all over your opponent's board until you take six prizes. Let's take a look at the list. This hybrid deck plays both Dragapult VMAX and Rapid Strike or Shifu VMAX. Both of these Pokemon can spread damage onto the opponent's bench with their respective attacks. Dragapult VMAX has the Max Phantom attack for two Psychic Energy. It does 130 damage, and you get to place five damage counters on your opponent's bench Pokemon in any way you like. This is very good for pinging damage and setting up numbers for your Rapid Strike or Shifu VMAX. With its G Max Rapid Flow attack for two Fighting and a Colorless, you have to discard all energy from this Pokemon, and it does 120 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. Now, one of the major drawbacks of playing Rapid Strike or Shifu VMAX is that it is easily walled off by Mew from Unbroken Bonds or Sun and Moon promo 215, which we have here. Mew has the Bench Barrier ability, which prevents all damage done to your opponent's bench Pokemon by your opponent's attacks. This is where Dragapult comes in. Damage counters placed is different than damage dealt. So Max Phantom's damage counters placed goes through Mew's Bench Barrier ability, meaning that you can place five damage counters on your opponent's Mew, even when it is on the bench, and then you can use your Galarian Zigzagoon with its Headbutt Tantrum ability to easily dispose of those troublesome Mew that you may run into with your Rapid Strike or Shifu VMAX, clearing the way for a big G-Max Rapid Flow later in the game. Another drawback to Rapid Strike or Shifu VMAX is that it is weak to Psychic. Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX can easily one-hit KO, your Rapid Strike or Shifu VMAX. But with Dragapult in the deck, we can hit Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX for weakness, which is very good. So Dragapult helps to cover Rapid Strike or Shifu VMAX's weakness to Psychic. Similarly, Dragapult VMAX is weak to Darkness type. So it is going to get one hit KO'd by Eternatus VMAX. That's where Rapid Strike or Shifu VMAX comes in. Rapid Strike or Shifu VMAX can deal a ton of damage to Eternatus VMAX with its Gale thrust attack and easily knock it out after you have softened it up maybe with your own Mew and its Psy Power attack or Galarian Zigzagoon or maybe even a Strafe early on in the game. These two make for a formidable one-two punch in the same deck because they cover each other's weaknesses and they have a similar strategy spreading damage on your opponent's board and setting up numbers to take sweeping KOs at the end of the game where you're often taking one, two, or three knockouts at a time. Now this deck can be a little bit inconsistent at times as you do have two different Pokemon VMAX which both have different kinds of energy requirements but these two Pokemon do jive together in some ways. They do cover each other's weaknesses and when it works this could be a very powerful deck. Check it out in the gameplay ahead and let me know what do you think of Rapid Strike or Shifu VMAX featuring Dragapult or Dragapult VMAX featuring Rapid Strike or Shifu VMAX in the comments below. Now, against Togekiss, resist fighting. Probably Dragapult just seems like the better call here. Yeah. Seems good. At least to lead. I think you want to lead Dragapults. Okay. We'll pass. I do think that the, yeah, the idea is that it's a Dragapult deck. I think the idea is that it's just a Dragapult deck that has her Shifu to help cover its weaknesses. Because Dragapult's weaknesses are pretty glaring. You know, it's weak to dark. Eternatus is a huge threat. Um, and the Urshifu, you know, is is relatively easy to power up. It's got a one energy attack, right? Which is pretty good. They're playing the 60 hit point Bronzors. We don't love that. Because we would like to knock out the bronze or keep them from ever getting bronze on in play. 
but you can see my opponent's benching these other kind of auxiliary Pokemon. I, I would be really worried about this matchup if they were only benching, you know, Togekiss and Bronzors. That'd be pretty tough, but with these basic Pokemon, I know they can't heal them with Cheryl. So I feel like we're doing okay. They do have Zamazenta. One, two, three, four, five, six. But they've already got six prizes on the board. So I'm not terribly worried about Zamazenta. I can probably make it work. All right, we do find a Marnie and escape rope there. Escape ropes are going to be good. And they have Zashian, right? So they've got a bench full of stuff. The Zamazenta, a little bit annoying. But we can also shred to just go through the Zamazenta. And we can also place damage counters on Zamazenta V. So... I mean, this is like another case of where Dragapult hel helps with your Urshifu's weaknesses, right? Urshifu VMAX pretty much can't beat this card unless you play a Phoebe uh, in your deck. All right, so we're just going to go Escape Rope to get around it. And then Marnie and hope that we can find ourselves an energy in a VMAX or at least a quick ball, get a Zenny, something like that. So let's see who they promote. Togekiss, cool. All right, we're gonna Marnie. And see what we got. Okay, not bad. We'll take it. Yo, what's up, Gallade with Prime Sub? Appreciate you. All right, we're gonna sit down that. So we're gonna go here. Get rid of that, and then Quick Ball, and Big Crobat for six. And we're looking for the VMAX. We do find the VMAX. Unfortunately, no Scoop Up Net to ping the Bronze Ore, but VMAX still very good right here. So we can go grab that, get the Dragapult VMAX. And we are going to be cooking, so that's good. I can also remove that energy with Giratina if I want to, which could be pretty decent. I mean, at least, like, sets them back a turn. It keeps them from attacking with Zamazenta, which I think is good, or at least from easily attacking with Zamazenta. So we probably want to do that. And we'll grab the Giratina. And I could actually data change. I mean, if I data change, I feel like we might as well, right? If I data change, really just draw out here, look for a scoop up net, find one, knock out the bronze ore, and we do. So we can scoop up net this, ping the bronze ore. And now we're having like an absolutely filthy turn, right? Uh, we can just scoop up the Giratina. And I think I'm just going to save this board position here without jamming my bench because we might want to Eldegoss this next turn. I'm not exactly sure, you know, or I may decide to just go double Dragapult in this matchup since we can take care of the Zamazentas in that way. But we really did a lot that turn. I mean, we removed the energy from the Togekiss. We knocked out the Bronze Ore. Um, it's one of the reasons Dragapult's just such a powerhouse of a, you know, an attacker. And now we've got the Octillery, which is super cool because now we can go get the Urshifu if we want to, put the energy on it. And by taking out the Bronzor, we have made it so that they can't heal this turn. I mean, they can heal, right? Because they've got no energy on their guy. But they can't like uh, move the energy around and, and do that. They also are going to have a much harder time attacking this turn because they can't move that energy off the Zashi and they can't saucer and attack with Togekiss. By taking out the Bronzor, you pretty much Assure that that is not going to be happening. Now they attach the energy. They don't have Cheryl. So that's good for us. And they're probably going for another Bronze Ore if I had to guess. Or they might. They have two Bronze Ore in the discard pile. They might just be out of luck on the Bronze Ore front. Which would be awesome. Yeah, it looks like they have to retreat into Zamazenta. I've got another escape rope. 
So that is good. I can play around the Zamazenta again. We do have the Octillery here. I think that I am going to just use that Rapid Strike Search, get the Urshifu. Slap the energy onto it. Escape rope, go into Urshifu, research, and say like, all right, hope I find a switch or something. Uh, worst comes to worst, I could strafe for, wow. I mean, they send up this guy, so I could strafe for 60. That's not even bad. Yeah, we don't find the switch, so that's totally fine. We'll just strafe and go into the Zigzagoon. Since they don't have any sort of uh, bench barrier Mew or anything like that, you know, we can aim on taking out that Crobat at some point with my Rapid Striker Shifu VMAX. And we kind of got the whole crew out here now. Yeah, we've got the whole gang here. Octillery or Shifu, Dragapult. You know, we're cooking. Feels pretty good. I really do like the Octillery just to give us a little bit of extra consistency with our Urshifu. It doesn't feel as bad because it makes the Urshifu just a lot more low maintenance than if we need to draw into the pieces at the right times. The Octillery, like you kind of get the Octillery out and then it just gets you the pieces that you need um, automatically, which is something that helps a lot. Because if we need the energy, we just go get the energy. If we need the VMAX, we just go get the VMAX. And I think it kind of helps clean up that, you know, those two separate attackers who need two separate things a little bit more. Now, something that's cool here is if I find a switch, I could, you know, potentially take the Crobat out, ping the Togekiss VMAX, but I do know they play Cheryl's in the deck, so... Got to watch out for the Cheryls when we're damaging those evolved Pokemon. And it looks like they're just going to Intrepid Sword again. Without the ability to move their energy around, they are kind of stuck, at, uh, it would appear. So we are going to thin our deck and go get, I think, the second energy there to put onto our Rapid Strike or Shifu VMAX since I've got Pokemon Communication and can just go get ourselves the V Max out of the deck. And we want to thin because I'm looking for a switch to get the Zigzagoon out. Didn't want to have to waste an energy on it. And we do not find a switch. So we're chilling for a turn. No scoop up nets. No switch. That's fine. And we have to pass. I do have a boss's orders and energy next turn though. So we can target down something on my opponent's side of the field. Indeed, he resists fighting. That is tough. It's weak to dark as well. Now, they don't have a ton of liabilities out. Wonder if they drew well off of that Marnie. Looks like they just have to Intrepid Sword. This is definitely a very grindy deck. You can tell. I think that here, yeah, we don't need to research. We can just retreat. Probably only have to take five more prizes. So let's go. But that, that, that indeedy is also going to be very frustrating. Like you can already tell. My opponent's only got six prizes to take. So it is kind of tough if they share all this token kiss next turn that is going to be bad for us but I think that we have to like hope that they don't just hit it for max you know with max phantom and then this thing is now within range of an easy KO and we can also put five here that doesn't really make a difference doesn't really make a difference here. Um, I think pinging the Ndidi seems fine. 
and then if they don't heal this next turn, we win. So we're hoping that their hand is just not that big and they don't have the Cheryl. But if they share all the tokens be max, then I've got my work cut out. Yeah. We were hoping that that would be the play that they did not have in their hand that turn. But, uh, alas, there we are. So now I have to figure out how to scoop up five more prizes, but essentially six more prizes. Right? not going to be very easy because they're just going to be leading with the Zamazenta okay we'll attach here and just research okay we do have swell and I can switch He's got 130 hit points left. Uh, I can switch into this guy. Let's see what else we got in the deck. Nine cards left, one more energy. That's fine. Okay. And we G Max Rapid Flow, knock out that, and put damage there. And by doing that, we know that the Zashian can at least get knocked out. I actually, well, we're close. But, yeah, with the Zigzagoon ping, I can deal 120 to both these guys and win the game. We are going to get marnie though. Which hurts a little bit. I had a very good hand. And we liked the boss that was in my hand as well. There was like a bunch of things about that hand that was very good. But, okay, that's fine. This hand is better. So by Brave Blading here, they still put me in a situation where Dragapult can take the knockout, right? So Dragapult's gonna go up and take the knockout and then put this thing close to KO range, right? And then all we have to do is spread on the NDDU and we win. So it's been sketchy, but we have got game pretty much locked up unless they've got some way to take bonus prizes or take a knockout that I'm not seeing or remove all of my energy. But if we put that damage counters there, um, even if they have a Mew, I can just gust that thing up and finish it off and take these two prizes. And we can see the Zamazenta is a little bit of a pain for us to play around, but this thing's only got 88 points left. The Octillery can guarantee us the energy. They can knock out my guy, but we've got the boss in our hands. So we're still chilling. That's Cheryl that one turn was definitely rough. And you can see they've got some tech attackers in here. It's very cool. They can attack with the bronze, or, you know, move the energy with the bronze song, the Aurora box strategy. But that is going to be GG's DK Sun. GG's Dragapult's definitely carrying its weight here in this matchup. And able to take those final prizes there on the Ndidi. We got the Max Phantom for game. That was a tough one. Yeah, Zamazenta is a serious, serious threat for this deck, but we were able to gust around. They had a lot of prizes on their bench that we were able to take advantage of. Okay, we're up against a single strike deck. Seems fine. Uh, we've got everything we could possibly want here. Seems great. A couple of Dragapults. Love to see it. I wonder if they play any 
you know, Pokemon that can hit me for weakness or whatever. We'll get both dudes out. I think that sounds fun. Let's do that. And just pass. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a crushing loss to Mad Party, champ. That was. That was very unfortunate indeed. Uh, I'm sure that there's something more that we could have done. Uh, but, uh, oh, well, it do be happening, so. I declare bankruptcy. <laughs> Wait, how do we even know this guy is Tricky Jim? Who says? Yo, they're about to bite for 80 damage. You realize that? It's kind of gnarly. Yeah, every time I lose to, uh, every time I lose to Mad Party, it does probably take a year off my life. Yeah. Every time you lose to Mad Party in the ladder, you're like, dang, man. I don't know how I'm going to recover from this. That just that just felt so bad. <laughs> I don't even think his name is Jim. What? How does he get off calling himself Tricky Jim? Thinking about rebranding the Tricky James. Tricky Ben. Tricky Jimmy. Dave says, every time I lose to Mad Party, I'm like, I gotta get better at these beer matches. Is that what you just grind a ladder with? Uh... With Mad Party? All right, here we go. Crobat down. Three boss in the discard pile already. Seems fine. I'd say that we're in a good spot for sure. Just relying on trying to find a switch this next turn. The Mew doesn't really do anything. I mean, it stops my Rapid Striker Shifu, but... Let's see what they bench this last Pokemon. Then we're just going to Marnie. We've got the Dragapult. It's probably Aurora Way, whatever my top deck is, unless it's like... I don't even know what card I would top deck that would be better than... Yeah, yeah that's fine. All right. We could... Yeah, we're just going to research. It's fine. Let's get a bigger draw. My opponent's already got a four-card hand. Just really wanted to find a switch. So we'll just dump the whole hand. That's fine. I'm sure we'll find a switch here. Let's get it. A switch. That'll do. We got karate belts. We've got switch. I could switch into Jirachi and scoop up net. I think that that is the play here. So I have an opportunity to get myself a supporter card. I could have taken. Oh, no, no, we're chilling. All right, yeah, we go here. And then we've got Max Phantom. 130, knock out one of these. And then we should just be in a really good spot here with 130 damage on the Dedenny already. You know, the Urshifu is weak to Psychic. They've only got one Houndor in play. Their bench is jammed. They've got a Crobat and a Dedenny. This is just a very ideal situation for us to be in. For sure. It feels good having Dragapult backed up by the Urshifu. I, I do like these guys together. You know, uh, I feel like Dragapult is just like the ultimate math fixer. And with Zigzagoon as well. I do think that the 
Fighting Dojo Stadium is really good in the Rapid Striker, Shifu, VMAX, just the regular one without Dragapult because you get to play basic fighting energy. And that also helps fix your math with the Rapid Striker, Shifu. All right, they've got a fan so they can bump one of my energies, but they don't have too much else going on this turn. We do have an escape rope. So I think that we just go escape rope to push something else up into the active position. I've got the horror psychic energy and we just go again. Um, could go for just a knockout with my Rapid Striker Shifu VMAX here, which wouldn't be horrible. Um, I mean, but the, oh yeah, okay, we'll go here. So you can research. I don't necessarily want to get rid of all these cards in my hand. I think we're probably better off just leading with the Dragon Pulse. So is that the third? Yeah, third energy I'm getting rid of? That's fine. We're just going to let it rip. We do find the scoop up nets, which is good. We'll quick ball away the Mew. We don't need that. Get ourselves Remoraid. Stellar Wish. Switch is cool. And then I think that switch into Dragapult. Scoop up net this. Ping one of these. Put this down. And it's like we already know that the We already know that the Dedenne is going to be there to clean up, right? But by taking out the Hound Door again, we kind of limit their ability to accelerate energy. And then I know that my opponent cannot, you know, feasibly use that G Max one blow next turn. You know, we can limit them to just three energy. They can use Impact Blow, deal about 200 damage. But at this point, all I need to do is just boss next turn. I mean, I've pretty much got game lined up on the Crobat and the Dedenne. Assuming that one of these gets out of the active position, we just basically have game. Unless they can maybe fan away another one of my energy or something like that. We are going to get Marnie, so I no longer have the boss. But they need to find a switch in order to move the Crobat got a scape rope so we can escape rope into Jirachi and see if we find a boss we could but I do know that my boss is on the bottom of the deck now I don't think that I have another one Dragon Ball is a very fun card to play it's fun because you get to you know take your prizes in a different kind of way than most decks you get to kind of spread damage all over the board and take your prizes all at once. It's nice. It's got a different kind of uh, tempo, different kind of vibe to it than your welder decks. You know, the welder decks got a very specific vibe to them. All right. Now they do have the attack with the Urshifu, but this thing is weak to Psychic. So all I have to do is just swing for game. So that is going to be GG's. And we just max Phantom for knockout, and we can ping onto the Dedenne and take that KO as well. All right, good stuff. Four, four prizes. Going second here against a Sableye deck. Maybe this is an Eternatus deck. Got a little bit of a rough opening hand with Mew as the active. I can go for an early Psy Power if this is an Eternatus VMAX deck because we can fix the math on Eternatus VMAX, put three damage on with Psy Power, and then Zigzagoon for 10. And then we can hit with Rapid Striker Shifu VMAX for 300 damage. 
with our first attack for just one energy. So I think that we'll probably start off this game with the Psy Power and ping that Eternatus and then dig for an Urshifu, try to just get that down. And this is why the Urshifu is just such a good partner for uh, Dragapults because it really helps to cover its weaknesses. We got a really nice top deck there, just a Pokemon so that I can communicate. I still think it's correct. Um, well, I guess, no. Now it is correct for me to not Psy Power, but to actually just go in and Strafe because I do have the Switch in my hand, so we're going to do that. We get a Strafe for 60 damage, which is very good. And I can bench the Jirachi, um, and then I can also Quick Ball. Hmm. Bench the Jirachi. We're probably just going to Strafe into the Mew, bench the Jirachi, and I probably want to bench one more Urshifu just in case I get targeted down. I think that would be good. I think that the card we want to get rid of is probably the Jirachi, just looking at it. Can get rid of that. I did prize my other Urshifu, so that's a little bit tough, but that's fine. Let's see, my opponent's active actually has special energy on it, so we're totally getting the Giratina. And we will remove that energy, and we've got the Strafe, Strafe into Mew, and we are just rocking and rolling here, ready to go. Turn two, Giratina's Dimension Breach is just incredibly good with Urshifu, since we already do play some scoop up nets to help move our Jirachis in and out of the active position. And now you can see we are just one switch away from a three prize Gale Thrust. Previously, uh, the Dragapult decks had just no way to compete with Eternatus. I mean, you had to rely on hitting your Crushing Hammers and getting really lucky in that regard. Um, but now we just have a 2 2 Urshifu VMAX line. Can really carry so much weight in this Eternatus matchup. So I think of this deck less of less as an Urshifu VMAX deck and more of a, a Dragapult deck with the Bears teched in as they kind of help with some of your more troubling matchups. And we are going to get Marnie to four, unfortunately. So hopefully we can yeah, get some Pokemon to play out of here. Looks like we can. We've got a Karate Belt Pokemon communication as well, which is all very good. And we've got a Horror Psychic Energy. Oh, the horror psychic energy I could put onto the Mew, and we could ping the Eternatus, but it does look like we find Karina's focus. So I think that we'll probably just go in. It might be correct to just actually ping the ping the Eternatus over there, kind of set those guys up for knockout, since I'm not really doing a whole lot to the Sableye here in the active. So. That seems fine. I think we can just commit this and we could scoop up the Giratina. Pokemon communicate that. Go get ourselves the Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX. Karate Belt and Karina's Focus for six. And we've got a pretty decent hand over here. Now I do want to have another Pokemon down so that I can switch and get the most of Gale Thrust this next turn. I'm not exactly sure that I want to bench any of these guys though. Uh, I think Day Day Change is probably fine here. Though I do know that that will be my only Urshifu for the remainder of the game, but to be honest, it's just going to be a boss boss game kind of situation that we've got going on here. So I think that that's okay. I could probably bench the Dragon Vault just in case and then we'll Day Day Change just to see some more cards. And we do like this hand, cool. I'm gonna Psy Power and put those three on the Eternatus. So now with this current hand that we've got, all I have to do is one hit KO the Eternatus VMAX and then we can one hit KO this next Eternatus VMAX and it's game over. Uh, the worst thing that could happen is if my opponent's got boss's orders, they could bring up this Urshifu and swing into it. But I could still just take the return knockout on their Eternatus, right? And I've got the you know, quick ball in my hand. I can go get myself the... Uh, yeah, and that's exactly what's happening here. At least they're going for the switch. 
to try and swing into my Urshifu. But unless they, you know, I mean, they can't even turbo patch or anything like that because all of their uh, dudes are evolved up here. I guess that if they play turbo patch, I guess that if they have Weavile, right, so they could theoretically turbo patch to a Crobat and then Weavile energy over, but uh, I haven't seen any turbo patch or anything like that, so I don't think that that's necessarily something we have to worry about. Uh, they don't have a Hiding Dark Energy in play, so they can't move it up to the Sableye to retreat it. So did they whiff the switch? And it looks like they did. So that is very good for me. We find the switch ourselves, which is amazing. Um, we unfortunately do not have boss this turn, but we are in a very good spot because I didn't take any damage. So we can just quick ball the Marnie away, go get ourselves literally anything. And the Giratina is fine. Just a, a Pokemon that I can scoop up net uh, into, right? So we'll just bench that switch here. Um, we can put the Aurora Energy here, scoop up net the Tina, and then Marnie. And that way we could just Gale Thrust the Sableye, just put some pressure on. Uh, I do have Escape Ropes, but I don't think that I necessarily want to do that. And we have the Quick Ball in our hand, which is very good. Uh, I don't want to discard my energy. We're just going to put some pressure on that Sableye so that I have multiple routes to take my knockouts now. Um, we've got enough damage on this thing that all I have to do is find a couple of switches and we can knock out the Eternatus. Really just one switch. Escape Rope, tough, of course, um, because it, you know they get to switch their active Pokemon. We want to target down these guys. Now, they actually can move the energy up to this Eternatus. Now it's a fresh Eternatus, right? And swing into my Urshifu with that, which is a little bit tough. But I think that we could still pull this off. Let's see what we've got going on here. I do find a switch, so I can swing into this Eternatus, but I know that it's not going to be enough damage there. Um, they've only got a three card hand. Do they have a boss's orders in that hand? So question, right? Because I could swing in with Mew this turn, right? Attached to Dragapult, switch, go here, and just Psy Power. Right? And by doing that, uh, I put us in a situation where, okay, if they hit into my Eternatus, then, or if they hit into my Mew, then they take 20 damage, then they get one hit KO'd by Rapid Strike or Shifu. This thing now has 10 hit points left as well. And, you know, they only have a three card hand. They have no Crobats or anything like that. Now all three of their Eternatus are damaged. We only have one Rapid Strike or Shifu in the deck, which is a little bit sketchy um, because we prized our other Urshifu, so we've been kind of waiting for the right time. And sure enough, they do have to just dread end into the Mew and then they eat that damage, which is very good for us. And now our Karate Belt is uh, is kind of unlocked as well. Not that I will necessarily end up using it, but good option to have nonetheless. So we do have the one hit KO on the Trinitus, but I need something to, I mean, really it's just the Dragapult is going to take my final prizes, but I will have to boss up that Galarian Zigzagoon in order to do it. So that's fine. We could just attach that here. Quick pull away this. Crobat. Evolve this. Draw our six cards. And we do have Swell. I have Switch, which is good. I don't have to waste my energy into the Urshifu and then Research. And all we're looking for is a boss's orders so that I can win the game. There's a boss's orders. So that's cool. Hope we don't get it Marnied away. We can bench Remoraid. I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference. Uh, we will Gale Thrust and take the knockout on the Eternatus. Now there's a couple ways we could win because the Galarian Zigzagoon also takes that knockout on the uh, on the Sableye. So 
I could uh, take the knockout on the Sableye with the Zigzagoon and then just have one prize remaining, and then potentially finish off the Zigzagoon. I do have to hope that they do not scoop up net to that Zigzagoon at this point, because looking at the rest of the board, there are no other cheap knockouts. The uh, the Sneasels have all evolved into Weaviles. Um, yeah, they're Eternatus over here, right? Uh, I do have a Rapid Striker Shifu that I just found off the prizes, but that's not going to cut it, so we're hoping for no hand disruption. If they don't disrupt my hand, then we've got it. But if they do, we are in quite a precarious situation, as I don't know that I have a good way to dig for that. I do. I could Jirachi, I guess, if it's Stellar Wish. Say Marnie. I'd have to find a way to get Jirachi into the active position in order to dig for my boss's orders. And it looks like they are going to look for something with that Crobat there. Uh, probably digging for a Marnie if I had to guess. They do only have one Marnie in the discard pile, so thinking that no! Sure enough, they do not have it, so we've got Dragon Ball VMAX boss's orders for game. We get to take our final three prizes, just one Rapid Striker Shifu uh, taking the KO on an Eternatus VMAX. Enough help for Dragapult to be able to carry the rest of the game with Max Phantom and we'll place those damage counters all onto the Sable IV and that is going to be GG's. And that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell, and of course, check out the Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash trickygym, where I stream live Pokemon trading card game content every single weekday. We've got a super welcoming community over there, and we'd love you to be a part of it. You all have a busted day. Peace.